If you ask someone who can solve difficult coding problems really fast how exactly they are able to do it, more often than not, they would say something like, I just had a feeling. It was obvious to me. But how can something that is so obvious to someone be so hard for you to think about, even after spending hours on it? Creativity is just connecting things. Coming up with a solution is never about creating something entirely new from scratch, but rather about creating connections between existing ideas and observations. And that's exactly how some people are able to develop this intuition, this cut feeling of which data structure and which algorithm to use for any given problem. So the big question is, how can you develop this feeling? To answer this, we need to read this groundbreaking book called Thinking Fast and Slow. This book was written by Professor Daniel Kahneman, who won a Nobel Prize for his work on behavioral economics. I'm going to cover the relevant parts of this book in this video, but I highly recommend you to grab your own copy of the book. In this book, Professor Kahneman argues that human brain consists of two systems. System 1 is fast, automatic and intuitive. We call this system the fast brain. System 2 on the other hand is slow, deliberate and analytical. We call this system the slow brain. Fast brain is the result of thousands of years of evolution and is responsible for what we usually call our survival instinct. When our ancestors went to forest for hunting and they felt fast approaching footsteps of a predator, they could simply sprint and escape without overanalyzing the situation with the help of their fast brain. Slow brain on the other hand is the logically thinking part of our brain. It requires effort and attention to process the information. It engages in logical reasoning and makes deliberate choices. So here is a question for you. What kind of brain do you normally use in a coding interview? You can pause the video and leave your answer in the comments. I believe that the answer of most people would be slow brain. Here is another question for you. Which kind of brain would someone who has developed an instinctive feeling for coding problems use in an interview? Take a moment to think and comment. Many people would answer fast brain, but it's actually a combination of fast and slow brain and we'll see why that is in a moment. When someone says that they just had a feeling, what they really mean is that their fast brain could quickly recognize the pattern and point them in the right direction. But if you let your fast brain run wild and do whatever, it can often lead you to the wrong result. Let's see this with the help of an example from the book. You're given a bat and a ball which together cost $1.10. The bat cost $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? You can pause the video and leave your answer in the comments. If you answer 10 cents, then your fast brain is taking over and leading you to the wrong result. But if you force your slow brain to engage, you can easily reach the right answer which is 5 cents. This is exactly why you want your fast and slow brain to work together as a team in a coding interview to make sure you reach the right answer. Your fast brain will point you to the right direction and your slow brain will verify the direction and flesh out the rest of the details. Now going back to the original question, how can you develop that intuitive feeling for solving hard problems? You basically need two things. You want your fast brain to be capable enough to pick up the pattern and point you in the right direction. Once you have a direction, you want your slow brain to be able to logically validate the direction and help you reach the solution. But how can you train your fast brain to recognize patterns quickly? For that, you need to enter the world of artificial intelligence and learn how computers recognize patterns. Imagine that you're building an AI model that takes an image of a digit between 0 to 9 as input. This AI model tries to understand the visual patterns on the image and predicts which exact digit an image represents. This kind of model can be very useful in tracking number plates of the cars that break any traffic rules. What would you need to build a model like this? First of all, you need a lot of images of digits that can be used to train this model. The images by themselves are not enough. You need to break these images down to components that actually represent patterns. What is that basic component of an image that represents the pattern that you see? It's the pixels. So you would need to feed this AI model the numeric value of pixels of the image. After taking these pixels as input, the model will predict a digit for the image. Let's say it predicts the wrong number for an image. You will have to readjust the model in such a way that next time it sees a similar image, it predicts the correct digit. This readjustment is the second thing you need to train the model. Once you understand that, you will find that human intelligence that you need to spot patterns is not that different from artificial intelligence. What do you need to build human intelligence or fast brain that recognizes patterns for hard coding problems. First of all, you will need a lot of hard problems to train this model. You can easily find a lot of hard problems on a website like LeetCode. But for the same reasons why the images were not enough to train the AI model, these problems by themselves are not enough to train your fast brain. You need to break these problems down to components that can actually help you predict patterns. Now one can argue that the data structure given in the problem should be this basic component for a coding problem. But that's not true because a problem involving arrays might use different technique like sliding window backtracking or dynamic programming 
depending on the problem. In fact, there isn't a single component similar to pixels that can help you recognize patterns for coding problems. So you'll have to develop your own library of components by solving more and more problems. I will share a useful library of components and patterns that will help you get started shortly. But for now, let's see how to come up with components and patterns. Let's say that you solve this problem called combination sum. In this problem, you're given a list of positive numbers and a target sum. You need to pick some numbers from the list so that they add up to the target sum. In the end, you have to return all the unique ways or combinations that satisfy this condition. You are allowed to pick a number more than once. In this example, 2, 3 and 3 add up to the target sum of 8. So it's one of the combinations in the answer. Pause the video to think about what are the main components of this problem. If you look closely, you have a big search space of all the different combinations that are possible. Let's assume that you can somehow make all these combinations from scratch. When building a combination, if you find that the sum of numbers is already greater than the target sum, you can stop building upon this combination because adding another positive number would further increase the sum and can never result in a valid combination. And if the sum is equal to the target sum, you can simply add this combination to the answer and stop building upon this combination. So you have clear constraints on when to stop. Whenever you have a large search space and clear constraints on when to stop, you should be thinking about backtracking. And that's how you build components and their corresponding patterns. All you have to do now is to fine tune these patterns as you solve more and more questions. Whenever you feel like an existing pattern is not working, readjust your mental model by adding more components and coming up with new patterns. Do it enough number of times and you would have trained your fast brain to point you in the right direction. As promised, I'm going to help you get started with building your own patterns. For that, go to Hacker Noon and read this article that will provide you 14 patterns to crack any coding interview. This article will only show you high level patterns. You will have to go through all the questions covered in this article and break them into corresponding components to be able to apply them to new problems. I will link this article in the description. Many people after watching this video might think that you can simply memorize these patterns and solve any new problem. If it was that simple, everybody would be able to crack coding interviews. As I already covered earlier in this video, training your fast brain is not enough. You also need your slow brain to be able to hold your fast brain accountable because it can make mistakes. That's why memorizing is not enough. You need to train your slow brain to think logically and help you reach the final answer. But how do you do that? Well, you might have heard that there are no shortcuts to success. You will have to solve a lot of problems end to end. Training your fast brain along with your slow brain by practicing a lot of lead code problems can help you build the intuition you need. But practicing coding problems on lead code is not enough. To crack coding interviews, you need to master some other skills that you cannot learn from lead code. To know what these skills are, watch this video. My name is Sahil and I'll see you in the next one.